one is the hidden side of black hair yet again, you know. And you know what happens when it comes to the hidden sides of black hair. You're going to get a whole leap of powerful, powerful information on nutrition. Powerful, powerful information on products for your hair. And even powerful, powerful information on the black hair care industry in the UK. And you know what happens, you know. The people that come with their families, the people that come with their children, and the goddesses, the queens, the empresses are out in full effect. It's a beautiful occasion right here, kings and queens. Come inside with Shakara and see Wagwan. Peace. Welcome back to Science of Black Hair. So now we're going to be having our next three talks before we go to another break. Um, our next speaker is the founder of Curly by Nature. Sorry. Yep. Our next speaker is the founder of Curly by Nature, an award-winning hair brand specializing in education and products for curly-haired clients and curl professionals the world over. Based in Northwest London studio, the brand empowers its community by providing them with the tools that they need to enjoy their hair with confidence. Curly by Nature has won three, not one family, not two, three awards, including best conditioner, at the, that deserves a round of applause before we even get started. Um, including Best Conditioner at the 2018 Black Beauty and Fashion Awards. She's presented at countless events and hosted workshops in the UK and beyond. She's launched the Curl Summit to help curl care industry as a whole move forward. Today she's going to be speaking on hair myths and facts about the hair growth. Please welcome to the stage Clarissa McDonald. Hi, family. That's what I like to hear, yes, because to make, I want this to be a conversation more than just a talk. So if you've got any questions at any time, you can just shout out to me, talk to me. So about me, I've cared for thousands of different curl types over the past 20 years. I know I look good, but you know, it has been over 20 years. Um, I first started free products in 2012, and obviously I've um, done quite a few. Leah spoke about it, thanks Leah. So that's just some of my clients at my studio. I've got a studio in Northwest London, if anyone wants to come and check it out. Um, that's where I do um, the formulation, we do production there. We also do um, clients, so it's a proper salon. So you can come and get your hair done, and we do education as well, where we teach you how to best take care of your hair. And I've um, been featured in articles, um, industry articles, and all sorts. Anyway, it's in Wembley. Yeah, pretty local. <laughs> so take my details at the end. So I'm going to talk about myths and facts about black hair care. So first what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put a few statements up. We're gonna go through them all and you gotta tell me if you think it's a myth or a fact. And now we can reveal it at the end. All, all alcohols are bad for the hair. Let me see hands or I wanna hear voices, which one? Okay, let me do it this way. All alcohols are bad for the hair. Say now. All are bad for the hair. Okay, now all alcohols are not bad for the hair. That was like 50-50. I'll get you 50-50. So technically, no. All alcohols are not bad for the hair. So for those who like to look on the ingredient list on the back of their products, which is great, it's really good to look at the ingredients on the back, but sometimes you might see something that says alcohol, and actually it's a good alcohol, it's a fatty acid that is extremely conditioning for your hair. There's lots of different chemicals, obviously, so don't get always caught up with the name of the ingredient, because sometimes it really is good, it's not always bad. 
Number two, protective styling always protects the hair and the scalp. Okay, I think that's an agreed no. <laughs> so it's, it's obviously not because if you're protecting your hair and you're pulling the follicles out of your hair and it's tight, when you get your hair done, like put your hand up if you had your hair done and you can't sleep. That's not protective. That's mashing up your headpiece. That means come to kit out. That's what your scalp is telling you to do. And you need to listen to your scalp if you want to have your follicles for the entirety of your life. If you, if you know that protective styling is, um, if you have your hair in for too long, for example, if you have braids or weaves, which is great, I love it all, but it can't be done for too long because your scalp still needs to be cleansed on a regular basis, just like your body and everything else. So you need to take it out after a certain period of time. I usually recommend two to three weeks. Take it out. Um, and if you do, I mean, you can do it for longer than that, but it's good to still cleanse your hair in that period of time. And trust me, you will see different results. If you don't do that at the moment, if you try it, you will see different results in your hair, for sure. Okay, number three, hair is most fragile when wet. <laughs> I hear the confidence, yes, 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 and then it's no, no, no. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna say um, yes, let me hear you guys, and no. So the truth is, actually, is when it's most fragile when it's wet. Yeah, when the um, the scalp is not the scalp, sorry, the um, hair um, is swollen with water. It's because uh, of the hydrogen bonds. It's it's actually a lot more fragile in that state. So having your hair wet all the time is definitely not a good thing. It's actually not conducive for the health of your hair. And actually, there's also um, a connotation that if your hair is dry, and I, when I say dry, I mean not dry as in it's breaking. I'm talking about just not wet. That makes sense. That's the strength. That's when it's the most strongest. Um, number four, all curly and it's supposed to be afro. All curly and afro hair is naturally fragile. Come on, you, you guys should already know. Okay, so half and half, it's not true. I mean, technically, because of the structure of the hair um, and the, curl, the way it has to curl, technically it can be more prone to breakage than other types of hair in terms of straight hair because of the way the cuticles lie down on the surface of the hair. So in that way, technically it is, but you know Afro hair is strong. Afro hair can be very strong. And it, the, the beauty of afro and curly hair is the versatility of it. There's so many different types, and so you can have um, someone that can do the most to their hair, like the absolute most, chemical treatment, all sorts of stuff, and it's still strong. And then there's other people that can't really do much, and it's, so it's really dependent on people. But technically, um, it's not true. Like, I hear it a lot, but it's not true. Number five, head wraps. Um, silk, satin, bonnets, pillowcases have no protective effects at all. I can't hear you guys, like... Yeah, that's false. Like, we all know that's not true, innit? <laughs> Number six. Um, knowing your curl pattern is not important to understand how to take care of your hair. Actually, it's not. When you're taking care of your hair, you're taking care of your hair. Why is it important to know your curl pattern? I know this one probably gets you because, like, knowing your hair type, I'll explain this, this one first. Um, I'll explain number seven first. But knowing, no, sorry, I'll explain number six. 
after we've done number seven, because then I think it'll be easier to understand. Knowing your hair type is not important. Is that important or not? I can hear conversations happening now. Come on, talk to me. Can we, can we have someone that, if you don't want to talk and ask questions, I can get someone to pass the mic around? <laughs> okay, so what do you say? It's important or not? It is important. So knowing your hair type is important, but knowing your curl pattern for care, when it comes to caring for your hair isn't necessarily important. And the reason why I have to make the distinction, because I see time and time and time and time and time again, that people think that they have to know their curl pattern. But why? Like, I, I, I need someone to tell me why they need to understand their curl pattern to care for their hair, because they still need to care for it. You still need to cleanse, moisturize, condition, but you don't you need to understand the curl pattern. Does that make sense? I think there's been, go on, please. I agree. So an example I would give is there could be somebody with um, a curly type hair and somebody with a really kinky that doesn't have a, a, a specific curl pattern, right? And they can have the same type of needs for their hair because they both might have a finer hair strand and a sparser um, density of their hair. So when you understand, which I'm going to go through quickly so I can give you the facts, um, what the sort of components and the characteristics of your hair is, that's more, un that's more important than just saying I've got 3B or 4A, because that doesn't really tell you much apart from its marketing language a lot of the time anyway. So if you've got any questions, if I'm confusing you, please let me know because I want to be very clear. Um, so... Honestly, when you're choosing the right products for your hair, it's really important to understand and assess the current condition of your hair. Like, what does your hair need? What is your hair telling you? What is it speaking to you at the moment? What the product the function is, and you obviously have to match it to that. Application and prep techniques is extremely important as well. So you can have a great quality product, but you need to know how to use it well. And, and opposite, if you've got a, a really bad or horrible, um, or shall I say like a low quality ingredient, you can still use it in a correct way that can suit your need, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Brands and companies um, creating the products that you choose because you have to think about who's creating the products that you're using. I think the reason why you guys are all here is part of that reason as well. And then quality versus quantity. So why selecting great products are so important? all of these things. And these are all my clients as well, apart from this one, and well, she's my daughter. <laughs> so it enhances the health and condition of your hair. The um, great products um, drives really quality results. It saves time, money, tears. Tears is really important because sometimes it's a headache and sometimes it's something not you don't want to look forward to doing hair, but it should be a ritual that is a treat and something that you look forward to. And really quality bonding time, especially if you have children. Or if you have yourself, like, pampering is really important and self-care. Um, it could be a relaxing time for you just to get your hair done. And it's something that we do traditionally in taking care of each other and ourselves. I think it's something that um, could be a, a real treat. It improves the experience, contributes to a cleaner planet, and also um, supports and builds the community. So this is a bit... Um, I'm going to just... It basically... The slide is a bit funny, so it says, where are you in your current condition? So when you're looking at your current condition, you look at the dry scalp, if you, it could be, these are some of the examples. Is it dry scalp? Is it breakage? Is it density? Is it thickness? What is it that you're going through? That's where you first start. Does that make sense, guys? So that's what you first, you can't just think, oh, my hair's not growing. Like, you have to really think about it, what it is that you want, so that you can achieve, like, understand what your goal is. You have to begin with the end in mind. Um, in terms of curl pattern, it is important, but when you're just genuinely caring about the, caring for the hair, it's not that. And I think it's more important when, when it comes to styling your hair and choosing styling ingredients, styling, not ingredients, products, should I say. 
because different styling products work differently on different curl patterns. I hear an agreement. <laughs> Why our hair can do amazing things, and um, that's when, like I said, because it's different um, styling products can be different just because of the behaviors and the characteristics, because essentially hair is hair. I can see a... Yeah, so there's a different, there's, um, everyone's got different genes. So mainly it's a um, DNA um, factor that's happening there. But then also, if you're treating your sister's hair the same as you would treat your hair, it's not gonna work because you've got different hair. So you, you might be able to use the same products, but you might have to use it in a different way, a different application. Um, you might have to do something, um, like for example, you might have to use um, maybe a thicker conditioner or something that's got more oil-rich ingredients in it, um, or it might not be the case. It really just depends. Like it, You would have to assess the hair and the scalp individually, and that's why it's not a one-blanket thing. It's, it really depends upon you, your, like, your behaviors in terms of, like, are you swimming often? Do you work in a kitchen? Like, what do you do? Um, and then it's best that way to assess how to treat your hair. Essentially, as a blanket, it's good to, for everybody to wash their hair like on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. Um, wash, condition, and style. Keeping it simple, that would be just like a generic one, but then it, it varies depending on your lifestyle, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, so. This is just the different um, follicle shapes of different hair or curl patterns. Um, usually the curlier it is, it will be um, more of a sort of bean shape. Um, and the straighter it is, it will be a circle shape. So then that also um, talks about the structure of it and why um, it curls and why it behaves the way it does. Um, when you're looking at the product, so sometimes in your arsenal of hair care products. I don't know what your bathroom looks like. It might have like a million different products <laughs> in there, but it might just be really simple. Um, you can have just sometimes maybe five or six really key products that you can manipulate to do all sorts of stuff. And all you should really be focusing on is the nurturing bit. As long as you've got you know, a good conditioner, styler, but I really think sometimes we need to focus more on like, forget about... Um, as long as you've cleansed it um, and conditioned it properly, it's what you're putting in your hair in between, if you are putting any products in, in it. Do you guys put in a lot of products in between your wash days? Okay, so in relation to oils, oils are great. I love, I love oils. Um, there's been lots of different um, conversations regarding oils because if you were to go to a trichologist, a lot of the tri trichologists will tell you no, not to use oils. You don't need any oils on your scalp, maybe in your hair. But then if you go to somewhere else, they will say something completely different. And it really does depend on you and how you're using it. And then also the quality of the oils that you are using, that really has an effect. And, what, and how you're combining it, has it got any um, extracts in it? Um, and also, I think, in terms of choosing ingredients, sometimes it's good to choose um, less ingredients, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes it doesn't really do much because they just carry oils um, that are quite thick. So there's like lots of different oils. But understanding exactly what the product does is really important and how to use it. So a lot of the brands will have obviously <laughs> instructions on the back but sometimes it helps with videos or reaching out to them because that's why I do s specific um, coaching so people know exactly so that they can see specific results um, within like the first month of them. We protect our style in lots of different ways and we've been doing it for a very long time and the reason why I always emphasize on protection is because that's what's going to um, retain the length if that's what you're looking for. 
Um, and then also, it also really helps in just every day. You don't have to always maintain your hair on a daily basis. Quality first is quantity is basically a mantra that I go with. And kiss is also a mantra, so just keep it simple. It's super simple. Um, my main thing is great hair doesn't happen by chance. It always happens by appointment. So it's about dedicating specific time. It doesn't have to be a wash day. I don't believe in wash days. It's more like a wash hour because you don't have to take that long. You don't have to be putting too much... No, like seriously. Like, seriously, it doesn't have to take that long. It can be very simple and we can simplify it and I think that's what make it, it will make it more fun um, doing your hair. And you'll see the growth. It's like just keeping it simple is super effective. Great hair, um, sometimes we have to unlearn things like not washing our hair for two months or and retrain as well and unlearn, like just putting oils on their hair on top, on top, on top because obviously oils and water don't always mix. And you don't, especially with like, I'm growing locks. Since the lockdown started, I was like, this is the perfect time. And I started my locks, so I do use oils, but it's only high quality oils. And anything I put in my hair must be able to come out. Because I don't want to have heavy locks. I want it to be clean and beautiful. Um, so choosing the right products is really important. So just like a recap, understand your current condition. Choose your products wisely, not just because it says miracle growth this, magic growth that, pop him curls this. Like, it's not about that. It's about just caring for your hair, and that's when you will see the results. So looking at the brands, the companies that are creating the products, do they even know about your hair? Do they know about you? And choosing quality versus quantity. My website is curlybynature.com. Um, I'm, if you look, sign up then actually in fact i've got something for you now you can't really see the products but i've got pro i've got a store downstairs i can show you my products and tell you about my services so come and check me out i've also got a free ebook so if you take this down you can get a free ebook and it gives you five five um things from stop that stopping your hair from thriving and if you know, if you understand what these are, this will be a game changer for you. So make sure you um, sign up right now. I've got two articles at the bottom because I often refer to them. It's just about what's in black, black women's hair products at the moment and how it's killing us and why isn't more being done about it. And then also, I've got the report on the hair, con the hair products um, for black women that contain hazardous, like hazardous ingredients that we've, we've grown up on. So if you guys want to find out more about that, then I can let you know. If you um, click on that, download the ebook, I'll send you more information about that as well. Any questions? It's near North Wembley, so I'll, um, I'll give you more information afterwards. But thank you so much for your time. Blessings. Oh. One second. Come. So, what, North Wembley, that's kind of near Northwest, isn't it? Yeah. And she's award-winning. I told you, Northwest is where award-winning people and things and products and salons are coming from. So. Award-winning business. Now, can I just ask you, if there are people in the audience now yeah. who are who want to start their own natural hair care business, yeah. what like 30-second tip would you give them? Research. I would say read. Sorry. I'll say study to show self-approval. You need to know your stuff. Like if you're selling to somebody else, you have to know your the ingredients, the formulation, you have to know business, you have to know marketing. I know it's a lot, but start now. Do something today. Like whether that's reading, how to set up a business, um, speaking to me, come and speak to me, and I'll give you some pointers as well. 
Um, but it's, it's all about research and studying. Thank you. Also, do you think that there are maybe too many people who are trying to rush their way into starting a natural hair care business and maybe not producing, look at the smile, <laughs> and maybe not producing quality products that, that represent our hair well enough? Yeah, yeah. It's right. She doesn't need to incriminate anyone. It's okay. I've used Curly by Nature's products for a long time, and I know how high quality they are, and I know how particular she is about making sure what she brings to the public is of a very superior quality. So I definitely want to big you up for that. And if we could give her one more round of applause, please. Thank you so much. And you can find her downstairs and she'll be joining us in the panel discussion as well. Okay, so we're going to be moving on to our next speaker, who is Natasha Briscoe. So she's going to be talking about how diet affects your hair. So she is a home educating mother of three. She's the founder of Arise and Shine Cosmetics, the in, an international speaker on hair science. She's created the Hair Matters Hair Course for Adults and the Hair Matters, no, My Hair Matters Workshop for Children and Teenagers where she combines science and practical instruction for her students. She believes that everyone was born with good hair. It's not determined by heritage or race. It is for us as individuals to learn the best ways to maintain what we have. And today she's gonna to be speaking to us on how your diet affects your hair. So can we please welcome Natasha Briscoe. Okay, you yeah. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of How Your Diet Affects Your Hair with Hidden Science of Black Hair. It is a pleasure to be in Birmingham and I'm delighted to share with you the importance of hair care from inside. I would like to invite nine people to come to the front while I start this brief introduction. I'm asking for nine volunteers. So whoever feels brave today, please come forward. And just um, sort of stand across the front here. I hope that's not anyone leaving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got- Someone lock the doors. No one can get out. Should we give them all a round of applause to start? Thank you so much for being brave. Okay, so today's presentation is all about diet. And um, I like to always start with, with our um, history. And one of the things that jumps out to me is the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. What we eat is important for our health. Can we eat what is forbidden and still expect good health? This is a question I'm throwing out. No, we can't, we can't. Of course we may eat fruit of the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It is only the, free, the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat, God said. You must not eat it or even touch it or you will die, she said. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it and you will be like God knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it and she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. Now I think we all know this story and I bring this story up because many times we as women tend to be mothers, tend to most often be the ones preparing the food for our families. So we need to consider what it is we are giving to our families. Are we giving food that will build them, help them while they're studying, help them with their physical well-being, or are we giving them food that will destroy them? And that's the thought I'd like to leave you with today. It's not just about having beautiful hair, it's about having health all round. Our diet is not just what we eat. Our diet is what we watch, 
It's what we listen to. It's what we read. It's what we think. And it's also the people we choose to hang around. So we need to choose our company very carefully. And I'd just like you to sit down just to pause and think about that for a minute. May have, many of you may have already heard this, but I would really like you to think about all these factors. So be mindful of the things you put into your body, emotionally, spiritually, and also um, physically. What we listen to, what we watch, and who we listen to. Okay, so as we're talking about diet, diet, I'd like to start with the importance of cleansing the body system, making sure that you take out all the rubbish, clean your gut before you build it up, okay? And you will also benefit by drinking a lot of water. So let's begin. Nutrition. A nutrient is something that provides nourishment for growth and sustenance. And I want us to consider that our hair, skin, and nails are the last part to receive nutrients from the food we eat. Now, I like good Jamaican food. But when I cook it, or my children cook it, and we eat, we're not thinking about, the body's not thinking about the nice ackee and, and um, steamed cabbage. It's not thinking about the rice and peas. It's thinking about the nutritional content. What am I feeding it? So while we're eating our food, and I know there's some amazing food being sold downstairs, I'd like us to consider what are we feeding our hair? What are we feeding our body? Our hair under the scalp is where the blood cells nourish the hair. And um, you may have heard about the hair growth cycle. And as long as the hair is re receiving healthy blood supply, the hair is at a better advantage to grow healthily. So the blood supply will bring the nutrients to the hair and it can get the nutrients only from the food that we're eating. So I'd also like us to compare ourselves to plants. When you see grass, or you, if for those of you who are successful in looking after house plants, you may notice that the, the leaves for those who are very successful will be green and flourishing but for when the plant isn't fed enough water isn't receiving enough sunlight we can see how it's impacted can't we and it's the same with our health it's the same with our hair it's the same with our bodies okay so for my brave um my brave people who have come up i'll do the first one which is water i'd like you to come to the table i'll call you one at a time and um, look on the tables in front and see if you can find something on the table that represents a nutrient that will be on the screen. So the first one is water, and I'll pick that up. I think that one's very easy. We mustn't forget water. We know we should be drinking at least six to eight glasses of water a day. And um, water is essential for our health because the water... Um, is found inside the cell and also just around the outside of the, the body cells. And we need water because it carries nutrients to the body. Water also helps to cleanse and remove anything, any toxins that are in the system. So we do need to be drinking our water. Who here is on track for their eight glasses of water? Okay, there's quite a few hands. So Birmingham's doing really well. What's that? What? <laughs> What did he say? He's not Birmingham. Okay. Okay. Well done. Okay. So protein. So I'd like you to just share your name and then if you can find something on the table that has protein. Okay. So my name is Dorcas. Okay. Thank you, Dorcas. So you're looking for something with protein. Yes, you've done well. Protein, we know most people are very familiar with protein being found in meats. But protein is found in, she picked up almonds, so thank you, Dorcas. You can take a seat. Everyone give her a clap, please. Thank you. So hair is made of a protein called keratin. And a diet lacking in protein will result in feeble, limp hair. 
Food is broken down into amino acids. These are the building blocks of protein. And um, they are connected together for the growth of healthy hair. So we need our nuts, our seeds, our milk, um, our legumes, which are things like your lentils. We need these for our hair to be healthy. Thank you, Dorcas. Hello, can you introduce yourself? Mavis. Okay, Mavis, your um, item to find is B vitamins. So if you can look on the table and see if you can find something that contains B vitamins. I'll make it a little easier. <laughs> you've, touched, you've touched the broccoli, so we'll go with the broccoli. Broccoli actually has B vitamins in there. It has folic acid, and folic acid is a, is, um, a natural type of B vitamin. I've also got this on the table. Sorry, but before I finish, can we give Mavis a clap, everyone? Thank you. Okay, so on the table I have this Floradix. Has anyone tried this or used this product before? It's amazing, isn't it? This is um, Floradix B Complex. And I like this product because it's simple and much easier to, to take. And it's got a nice flavor, which helps as well. Now, um, when you take the B vitamins, if you take the B Complex, B Complex means consisting of different parts. Now, when you take them all together, they work better. Many people will, will enjoy taking um, B7, which is biotin. I'm sure we've been familiar with the word biotin. We also have that on the table here, um, but I'll touch on that on the next slide. Um, they work well together. So if you just take biotin by itself, you're not going to get all the benefits that you should. You, you'll get part of the benefits. Um, they are water soluble, which means that they're flushed out the system and they should be consumed daily, just like vitamin C. Um, Anybody who is deficient in B5 may find that they have gray hair. So this is something to consider. Um, and a deficiency can also, B5 also assists with reducing stress. It helps with certain types of alopecia. And sources of B5 include your whole grains, your greens, your brewer's yeast, your meat, seeds, and nuts. Okay. Um, niacin, which is also a B vitamin, topically helps with the skin. So anybody with skin issues or anyone with lupus would also benefit from B5 if they take it with vitamin E. Okay, the next one, oh, biotin. So I mentioned biotin briefly and I mentioned that it is excellent for helping the body to take more nutrients from the food that we're eating. So if I have my, my, um, my broccoli, the body's going to feed all the important organs first, the brain, the liver, the heart, and the hair and skin is always the last to be fed. So you can tell a person's health by looking at their hair and skin generally. Now, in terms of biotin, biotin helps the body to take more nutrients from the food you've eaten and put them in the cells. So this is something that we want. But as I mentioned before, it works well when you take it with the other B vitamins. So taking it alongside the B complex would be good. And if you did decide to take biotin, it's important to take it starting with quite a low dose because although you, you can take up to 3,000 or 5,000 or even 10,000 uh, milligrams of biotin, micrograms of biotin, it's important to start small so you don't shock the body and then build your way up. So I always say start with about 1,000 UG, and then after about a month or two, you can increase it to 2,000, and then from there you can go up to about 3,000. Okay, so could you please introduce yourself? Delphina. Okay, welcome from London. Um, your nutrient to find is iron. Iron. Excellent, yes. Yeah. So, what have you picked up? Spinach. Do we agree with our sister? Yes, let's give her a clap. Thank you very much. Okay, so and iron is a trace mineral, which means you don't need it in large amounts. 
And iron is one of the culprits for hair loss in um, women, um, especially during the time of the month when the men for those women who are of the age where they're still having menstrual cycles. Um, iron, a deficiency in iron also um, causes hair loss. And there were studies done where they found that those women who had um, types of alopecia, some of them, when they were given iron supplements, they found that the hair started to grow back. So check your iron levels. Um, if you find that you are tired, pale, short of breath, if you find that you have hair loss or grain hair, then it's worth checking your iron. And good sources of iron, blackstrap molasses, and I'm not just saying any molasses, it has to be blackstrap because there are more nutrients in it. Um, beetroot, which is also on the table, your greens, lentils, beans, and dried fruits, such as your dried apricots. So these are all good sources of iron. Okay, thank you. Well, precious. Precious. Okay, precious. So your item to find is zinc. This one might be a little more tricky than, than the others. Okay. I'll give you a little clue. Zinc is found in grains, it's found in seeds. That might help. So, okay, you can find it in your seeds, yes. Pumpkin seeds is a, it's an excellent source of zinc. Thank you, Precious. Can we give her a clap? Thank you. Thank you, Precious. Zinc is not one of the easy ones to find. And it's not often um, thought about much in terms of our diet. Now, zinc is found in the cells in the blood, the hair, and the skin. So it's, it's essential for good health. Um, it helps with healing wounds. It helps to create your new hair cells. So we do need it. And it helps to strengthen the hair follicle, the protein structure of the hair follicle. Um, it's good for sebaceous gland health. Who here knows what the sebaceous gland is? That's right. Thank you. The sebaceous gland is the gland that produces the oil that moisturizes our hair. So if anyone's experiencing dry hair, then you might want to consider your zinc um, in intake. Um, it helps to promote the use of proteins and metabolism. So we need to think about protein. Hair is a protein. So we do need to consider the amount of zinc that we're taking, though it is a trace mineral, so we don't need it in great amounts. Um, symptoms of deficiency. So you'll find that there'll be a breakdown of the protein structure of the follicle. Um, hair loss and dandruff are all symptoms of a deficiency of zinc. Um, good sources are your chickpeas, um, pumpkin seeds, and nuts. Okay. Copper. Hello, could you introduce yourself, please? Hi, Hi everybody. I'm Juliet. Okay, Juliet. Thank you for coming over. So, Juliet is looking for copper. This is another one of the, the harder ones to find. into some more. Thank you very much for coming up. Let's give her a clap. Thank you. Okay, so this is one of the tricky ones to find, and not many people consider um, the importance of copper for our diet. Um, copper can be both organic or inorganic. There are many people who may have a set of copper pots, and I once went and bought, because they're so pretty, I went and bought a set and a friend said to me, why did you buy that? I didn't even get to display it in my kitchen. It's so pretty. I had to put it back in the box after she told me about the dangers of um, inorganic copper toxicity. So I was disappointed because I bought them for the beauty of them. And I brought them back to the shop because they can cause issues with the liver. But organic copper um, is excellent for iron absorption. For hair color pigment, it helps to restore hair color pigment. 
um, blood vessels, and we need the blood to be able to flow comfortably through because it's life. It carries life, and it's carrying all the nutrients to our body. Um, it's good for immune function, bones. Symptoms of the deficiency of copper would be anemia um, because it's useful for iron absorption. It would be thyroid problems, gray hair, um, osteoporosis, low white blood cell. Now, copper can be found in iron-rich foods, and this is why I keep touching on this molasses. There are a number of people who have had gray hair issues and have been taking molasses, and they've found that it's helped to reverse because they've, the, the cause of their hair graying was linked with deficiencies in their diet. Um, seaweed, so kelp, which is also on the table, also contains copper. Mushrooms, meat, greens, whole grains, nuts, and in particular, Brazil nuts and seeds. These are all essential for your copper intake. Okay, so we'll roll through to the next one. Hello, can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Nicole from London. Okay, Nicole, we've only got two minutes, so I'm going to let you find something with magnesium in it. You can have a look at the screen if it will help, because we haven't got long. Okay, thank you very much. Walnuts, should we give her a clap? Okay. So walnut help to prevent calcium buildup on the scalp. Um, symptoms include um, gray hair, thin hair, hair loss, facial hair in women, um, leg cramps, cold hands and feet, and it can be found in your avocado, dark chocolate, nuts, and legumes. Okay, what's your name, please? Hi, my name's Dion. Dion, welcome Dion. Your item is iodine, and I'll make it a bit easier by clicking on the screen as we've probably got a minute left. So while you're looking, iodine is essential because the thyroid gland relies on it to work properly. So anyone struggling with thyroid issues, it might be worth looking into your iodine, and it helps to make hormones for healthy hair, teeth, and bones. So we're seeing that symptoms of the deficiency include weak hair and hair loss. Um, so iodine is found in your sesame seeds. It's, oops, it's, okay. it's found in your kelp. It's found which we have on the table here. Yeah, thank you, Dion. And um, I will do the last two together because of time. So I'd like to ask you to introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Letitia from London. Okay, Letitia, welcome. Catherine. Catherine. Oh. Welcome, Catherine. Okay, so your item is selenium, and um, there's a screen with the uh, items there. And yours, Catherine, would be your omega fatty acids. Okay? Thank you very much. So, we, can we give her a clap? And Catherine, yours will be on the screen as well, your omega 3 and 6. Um, the body needs these. And because the body can't make them by themselves, we need our body to get the omega fatty acids from walnuts. So if you can look for walnuts on the table, um, your oily fish for those who eat fish. Well done. Can we give Catherine a clap? Well done, Catherine. Thank you. And, um, and um, omega threes are excellent, especially for those who are struggling with memory. So I know my time has come to an end. It's been a pleasure speaking with you about diet. And if you have any questions, I'll be walking around. I don't have a table downstairs. Please come and see me. For those who would like to get in touch, um, you can contact me on these platforms. And my question is, what have you fed your hair today? Okay, so, as a mother of three, congratulations by the way, um, what advice would you give to the parents out there for getting some of these hair health foods into children's diet that are maybe not as palatable to children? Okay. Quick tip. I would encourage you to teach your children to cook. Teach your children to cook. My son is 20 and he can, my, from my do and he can cook up a meal. When my daughter was 11, she was in the kitchen. I didn't even need to go in there on a Sunday. Teach your children to cook. That's my advice. Thank you.
And Natasha's going to be joining us on the panel later on. So if you have any more questions, you can ask her there.